I was pitching uh, a bunch of stories to Larry and Jerry. I don't even remember what they were. That was all over the place. I wasn't very good at it. And at the end, when I felt a little comfortable, I started telling them this story about this guy who sells soup in New York down the street from David Letterman that I used to get. And he was called the Soup Nazi. And, you know, I heard when you, when you get Larry to laugh, you know you've sold a story or you've got a story you're going to do. And the both of them started laughing hysterically. So, of course, I was encouraged and kept going on with it. And uh, after they stopped laughing, they said, do that as your first story. And I said, wait, I really, I said, what are you talking about? I was just telling you a story. And they go, no, no, that's, that's a show. Do that as your first show. The strange thing for me is I had experienced that soup kitchen without realizing that I was dealing with the soup. I mean, I had eaten there many, many times and just had not had the experience that Spike had had. I lived on 55th Street between Broadway and 8th Avenue, and across the street from me was the Soup Kitchen International run by this guy, Al, who would constantly short me on the strawberry. Uh, there was like a strawberry that you get, sometimes you get it, sometimes you didn't get it, and uh, the, the soup was incredibly expensive, but very, very good, and you know, you weren't sure, did you get the bread, did you not get the bread? Should you complain, should you not? There were long lines, and it was, and you were like, you know, trying not to piss the guy off, and now I'm doing the soup Nazi, it's about that guy. Jerry walked by Spike Ferriston, and he said, tell, tell Larry a little bit about, you know, the real guy. And I just looked at Spike, and I said, there's a real guy? Medium turkey chili. <laughs> Medium crab bisque. I had not done a Middle Eastern accent specifically. I'd done lots of other Spanish, Italian, whatever. So I, uh, I popped Lawrence of Arabia into the uh, VCR, and I just listened to Omar Sharif. See, a lot of people don't know that, that the soup Nazi is actually just an imitation of, of Omar Sharif. Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Two dollars, but everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> what? No soup for you! Jerry gave me a great acting tip that I have to credit him for, which is, he told me, I had not seen, and still to this day, have not seen Scent of a Woman. And I told the soup Nazi that he looked like um, Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. And then Jerry told me to go, hoo hoo <laughs> Like Al Pacino apparently <laughs> does in Scent of a Woman. You know something? <laughs> no soup for you! Come back, one year! Next! And I got a big laugh, so that was really like uh, getting the answer to the to the test where you haven't read the material. So right before I left New York, I moved into a, an apartment building that only lets you move furniture on certain days. And I made it one day, I made it in with my giant TV under the wire. But I was thinking, what happens if I did, what happened, what would have happened had I not done that? And I'd been stuck with that TV from Saturday afternoon way on through to Monday morning. What, what do you mean I can't bring it in here? I live here. It's Sunday, Elaine. There's no moving on Sunday. That's the rule. But I didn't know, Tom. I, can't you just make an exception, please? I've, I've, I've got a nice face. <laughs> tomorrow, okay? You move it in tomorrow. I'll even give you a hand, all right? Oh. Well, you're just going to have to hold this for me. I'm the guy on the sidewalk. I don't have a layaway. Larry kept going, but why would these guys steal an armoire? Because originally, they weren't uh, gay thieves. <laughs> So he's saying, who would steal an armoire? Who would steal it? You know, you'd get called into the office to help him solve these problems and then quickly shoot out. And he came, came on to this idea, well, let's make him gay. Only gay guys would steal an armoire. They were the perfect thugs. Can't take this. This belongs to a friend of mine. Look, do you want to get hurt? Huh? I don't think you want to get hurt, because if you want to get hurt, I can hurt you. Now just back off. Wow. Just pick it up. What is this, huh? You have some kind of product here? What is it you are not understanding? We're taking the armor, and that's all there is to it, okay? One of the, the great moments from that show, and I remember it, watching it come about, they were in the, in the living room, and Jason was, uh, you know, George was wanting to tell Jerry about how obnoxious he and Schmoopy were together. And he was about to include Elaine. None of us, other than Jerry, of course, wrote the show. I mean, so we can't, no, no, none of us can take credit for that. But maybe we enhance a little bit of business. Sheila and I are kind of on the outs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I watched in the rehearsal where Julia just said, 
Hey Andy, d wouldn't it be funny if I kind of got up and snuck out the door while George is like just about to need me? And Andy just went, yeah, try it, try it and see what happens. And that's the way they worked. The two of you were making me and every one of your friends sick. Right, Elaine? <laughs> I didn't think that was a very strong episode. I remember um, I felt like we were struggling that week. It wasn't really landing on its feet. I don't know why that episode hit beyond the people that knew that we were doing a parody of an actual place and an actual guy. It took me by surprise. I think it took Larry by surprise, too, because I think we both were worried that we may have had a little bit of a turkey in our hands, and it proved to be totally the opposite. It just, it really came together that night and, uh, and it turned out to be, you know, one of the greats. Suddenly someone said, hey, come here. It was Carol who said, uh, the Super Nazi's on TV. And it was all over the news. Uh, no one was more surprised than me. I, I still don't understand why. My only guess is that a lot of those local news people were going to him like I was in New York and recognized, you know, the guy we cast looked just like him. We were working on the A season in New York with Jerry and the writers, and Jerry said, uh, let's go to the Soup Nazi for lunch. And I said, that's really not a good idea. And he said, why? He, he's, uh, I made him famous. I go, he doesn't see it that way. He, he sees you as ruining his life. And he goes, come on. So reluctantly, the, all, uh, the group of us trooped down to the Soup Nazi, and uh, Jerry got in line. And when Jerry's turn came up, I, it was like a triple take the Soup Nazi did. He kept looking and looking, because I guess there'd been a lot of Jerry Seinfeld impersonators coming, but here's the real deal. And he had his money there, and he said, uh, you <laughs> He just started, just unloaded on him, and then kept unloading on him, and then kept unloading on him, and kept going. It was a very uncomfortable moment. People were shocked. And he goes, I demand an apology. And Jerry turned around and gave the most sarcastic apology I've ever seen anyone give. I'm sorry, like that. And he went, no, it's so for you. The fact that he got so upset by the publicity was great. <laughs>